Welcome back to World of Immersion. Now I know we already have a rankings video for every coaster at Six Flags Magic Mountain. However, recently our opinions have drastically changed. So here is our brand new updated video ranking every single coaster at Six Flags Magic Mountain in 2022. Now before we start today's video, I definitely recommend checking out our previous ranking of every single coaster at Six Flags Magic Mountain right here linked in the top right corner. Also be sure to subscribe in case, I don't know, we make a third video ranking all the coasters. You never know, maybe our opinions will change again tomorrow. All right, but with that out of the way, let's get right into the video. Starting off with number 20, we have Magic Flyer. This is a typical kiddie coaster. There's really nothing important about it. Unfortunately, neither of us have ridden this coaster because you do need to be under 54 inches to ride. But it's a very small kiddie coaster, and I think most people would agree that it's in last place. All right, coming in at number 19 is one of the most thrilling coasters in the park, and that is Speedy Gonzalez Hot Rod Racers. Now, this thing is insane if you're like three years old. All jokes aside, this is just your typical kiddie coaster. Really nothing much to be said about the Zamperla kiddie coaster in the park. The theming is actually pretty good though for Six Flags, to be honest. Coming in at number 18, we have my personal favorite kiddie coaster of all time. This is Canyon Blaster. This airtime monstrosity will send you flying out of your seat on those insane bunny hills. It provides one of the most thrilling experiences, and I genuinely do actually enjoy riding this coaster. While it is very short and small, it's still a very fun ride. All right, but coming in at number 17 is going to be our highest ranked kiddie coaster on this list, and that is Roadrunner Express. This is by far the biggest out of the kiddie coasters. Manufactured by Vacoma is actually the only Vacoma in the park, and it's a decent family coaster. However, you can find these like practically everywhere. That being said, it's decently well themed, and it's a great ride for kids. But with that out of the way, let's get right into the rest of the video with all of the major coasters in the park. Now coming in at number 16, we have the park's oldest roller coaster. This is Gold Rusher. While this Aero Mine Train can be thrilling sometimes, it's relatively tame and overall pretty rough, and I think most people would agree that the other coasters at the park are significantly better. While it's a fun filler coaster if you happen to walk by since it never has a line, it's still not quite as good as any of the other coasters at the park. Alright, coming in at number 15 is the tallest family coaster on the face of the planet, Superman Escape from Krypton. Now seriously, I am not joking when I call this ride a family coaster. I really do not like this ride at all. You feel absolutely nothing on that launch because it takes forever to get up to speed. And yeah, while the view is cool from the top and it's kind of scary to be up that high, it really is just is one of the most boring coasters I've ever been on. I feel like it gets so much hype for being one of the tallest coasters in the world, and just the other two coasters that are up there with its strata coaster title, they're just so much better. Superman just really does not live up to that strata coaster name in my opinion, and it just is really one of the most boring coasters I've ever been on, and that's why it ranks so low on this list. Coming at number 14, we have Revolution. While this coaster is relatively tame, and definitely not the smoothest ride sometimes, it is quite impressive that it contains the first ever successful loop on a roller coaster, and it definitely has that cool classic feel when you ride. Hence the name, Classic, the new, Revolution the Ride. All right, coming in at number 13 is going to be the classic Aero Suspended Coaster Ninja. Now, I have definitely grown to appreciate this ride a lot more recently. I feel like it's a super intense and relatively smooth experience. While it is a somewhat short ride, and that second lift hill really kind of kills the rest of the ride for me, it is a really fun ride overall. Overall, Ninja is a great coaster that everybody can enjoy because it's not too intense while still having some great moments. Now coming in at number 12, we have the B&M stand-up Riddler's Revenge. While this coaster can sometimes provide some cool forces, it's overall a genuinely uncomfortable experience. The standing position is definitely not something that we enjoy on a roller coaster, and it definitely has that B&M rattle to it. There is one good moment of airtime, however the rest of the ride is just mainly rough, forceful elements. It's not necessarily a bad layout, and it's overall a fine ride, just the stand-up aspect kind of kills it. Alright, coming in at number 11 is gonna be Scream. Now this ride has slowly fallen lower and lower on my rankings of Magic Mountain's coasters because I feel like it's just gotten rougher and rougher as the years go on. It's got a really bad rattle to it and just the elements aren't very forceful. Overall, it's one of the weakest coasters in the park in my opinion, but it definitely ranks above the other coasters so far on this list because at least it's pretty tall and the elements can sometimes be fun. Overall though, not really my favorite coaster, and it also really sucks that it's right over a parking lot, so there's nothing to look at while you're on the ride besides cars. But with that being said, let's get right into the top 10. Now coming in at number 10, this may surprise some people, we have Goliath. 
This Guy Vanilla Twister Hypercoaster is one of the most airtime deprived hypercoasters that we've ridden. Most B&M or Intamin style hypercoasters are known for having tons of airtime, and that is what makes them so great. However, Goliath has that one moment of airtime, and then the rest is just discomfort. Not to mention that 4.5 G's on the Helix is one of the most uncomfortable elements on any roller coaster. Overall, it's still fun because of its height and its speed, and it's actually very smooth but it just doesn't have the same forces that other hypercoasters have. So that's why we rank it so low. All right, coming in at number nine is gonna be Viper, one of the most underrated rides at Magic Mountain in my opinion. Now this ride is crazy forceful, especially if you're in the back row. That first half of the ride, you get flung over that first drop and whipped through those inversions at such insane speeds that you are going to gray out or even black out no matter what. And also this ride at night is something else. It is so insane. And it is so hard to tell where you're going on this ride. Yes, those trim brakes on the second half of the ride definitely kill the rest of it. And it makes you go super slow through the rest of the ride. But at least that gives you some decent hang time on those inversions instead of the crazy forcefulness of the first half. The reason this ride is not higher on the list is because yeah, it is still pretty rough. Because it is one of those old classic arrow loopers. However, it is just so crazy forceful and fun that it just had to be at number 9 on this list. Overall, though, it is a great ride, and I would definitely recommend it. Coming in at number 8, we have West Coast Racers. In our opinion, this Premier Rides multi-launch is actually slightly overrated. If you look at all the wait times for all the coasters at Six Flags, this ride always has a two-hour line, and we just don't get it. Sure, the launches are fun, the layout is cool, there's some good airtime, but overall, it's just not that great of a ride. Now, that's relatively speaking. Compared to some of the other coasters on this list, this is a great coaster. However, there's many things that hold it back. The first being, that first launch is just kind of terrible. It's an extremely slow acceleration, and so you don't get that fun launch feeling that you do on rides like Full Throttle. The second main problem we have with it is the restraints. Not only are the seats extremely small and uncomfortable, but they contain those very uncomfortable comfort collars. These kill a lot of the airtime, as well as just provide an overall uncomfortable experience. Not to mention the extremely close shin guards. Both of us are relatively tall people, and we would say for anybody over the height of about 5'8", these restraints are extremely uncomfortable. Your shins are constantly being hit, and it kills a lot of the fun that you're supposed to get with a coaster like this. However, like I said, this is all relatively speaking. It's still a very fun ride, and we would choose it over many other rides at the park anytime. All right, coming in at number seven is a ride that has really grown on both of us recently, and that is Batman the Ride. Now, I don't know what happened, but ever since Batman the Ride reopened a couple months ago, it has been running fantastic. Especially in the front row, this ride is insanely smooth. It is definitely one of the smoothest coasters in the park by far. And not only is it really smooth, but it is also insanely forceful. Those loops always cause me to gray out, and that one helix is insane. I honestly don't know why this ride is so good recently, but it just is. You have to go experience Batman, and I would definitely recommend the front row for this ride, because it is so much fun. The only thing holding this coaster back is its length. It is really just a short ride overall, lasting only a little bit over 30 seconds. But overall, it's a really fun ride, and a super smooth and intense ride as well that you must experience. Now coming in at number 6, we have Full Throttle. This Premier Rides launch coaster is fantastic. It has one of my favorite LSM launches of all time, and that loop has some of the best hang time you can get in the world. Not to mention the third launch where you go over the loop and then down that 90 degree drop provides some amazing airtime. The only thing holding it back, like Batman, is its length. It's an extremely short coaster, and sometimes it's not always worth the weight that it gets. However, that being said, it's still a fantastic roller coaster, with great forces, it's very smooth, amazing elements, and overall just a really fun ride. All right, we've made it to our top five, and coming in at number five is the park's only wooden coaster, and that is Apocalypse. Once again, this is another underrated coaster in my opinion. This ride is crazy forceful, it has some really strong airtime, and it's just a really fun ride overall. It is one of the most out-of-control experiences at the park by far. While it's not the fastest coaster in the park, it feels like it is, because you are flying through those elements at crazy speeds. I would definitely recommend the front row on this ride as well, because it is significantly smoother in the front row. However, the back row is also fantastic for that first drop. Overall, while it's a relatively rough ride, its elements and intensity make up for it by far, and is one of my favorite wooden coasters that I've ever been on. So that's why it makes it at number five on our list. Coming in at number four, we have Tatsu. This BNM flying coaster is out of this world incredible. Not only is it amazingly smooth, but it also has some great elements with very intense forces. That pretzel loop is one of the most intense elements I've ever experienced on a roller coaster. While it is my least favorite part of the coaster, it's still a great element. 
And that says a lot about Tatsu. This ride genuinely feels like you're flying around the mountains of Six Flags. It is also very, very tall, and I think I sometimes forget that. Not to mention, Tatsu night rides are some of the best night rides in the world. Overall, this is just an amazing ride and one of the best coasters out there. It's relaxing and fun while also having some very forceful elements. And overall, it is an amazing coaster. All right, now coming in at number three is a ride that's fallen a little bit in our ranking since last time, but is still a fantastic ride. And that is Wonder Woman Flight of Courage, the park's newest roller coaster. Now, Originally, we had this coaster ranked as number one, and while it's not that good, it is still an incredible coaster. I think the reason it ranked at number one before is because we had some fantastic back row rides on it. And that is really where this ride shines, is in the back row. Really, any other row on this ride is not as good, because the airtime is not as strong. But really, in the back row, because of how long that train is, you get flung over that first drop, and every other airtime moment is really, really amplified because of how long the train is. This ride has some great airtime moments, has some great inversions as well, and a fantastic first drop. It is also super smooth because it's a brand new coaster. However, I'm really not a fan of the over-the-shoulder harnesses that it has, but I can look past that and see how great of a ride it is still. I would definitely recommend this coaster. It's not too crazy intense, so I feel like the majority of people out there would like this ride. But it is not number one, so let's move on to our number two coaster in the park. Coming in at number two, we have X2. This Aero and SNS 4D coaster is one of the most intense rides in the world. This is genuinely one of the few rides out there that I still get nervous before riding. The feeling of being lifted up backwards very slowly and then dropped headfirst into a loop is just extremely terrifying. Everything about this ride is amazing. The elements are forceful. It's fast. It's tall. Everything that you would want in a coaster. Now, the only caveat is obviously it's extremely rough. And I think most people acknowledge that. However, the roughness almost adds to the intensity which makes it so fun. Part of the fun of this ride is feeling like you're going to fly off the tracks. That's what makes it so scary. However, that being said, oftentimes the roughness turns into discomfort, especially in that last turn at the end of the ride. It can definitely leave your legs and neck hurting afterwards. However, if you're in the inside seat front row, you're going to have an amazing experience. But overall, this is just such an incredible ride. And it's definitely an extremely rare type of roller coaster, which I think also adds to its fun. All right, and coming in at the number one spot, there's only one coaster left on this list. I'm sure many of you can guess it, and that is Twisted Colossus, the park's RMC dueling roller coaster. Now, this ride is just so incredible. I definitely take this ride for granted a lot of the time because it is one of the coasters I've ridden the most on this planet. Because Magic Mountain's my home park, I've ridden this ride over a hundred different times, and it is such a fun ride. If you're in the back row, you get flung over that first drop twice because you go on both sides. And it just has some of the best airtime moments, some incredible inversions. And if you get a duel, it just makes the ride so much better. Seeing riders twist above your head or twisting above the other rider's head is just such an incredible experience that is really not comparable to any other coaster in the park. Overall, Twisted Colossus is a fantastic RMD coaster, and I really see no flaws with this ride at all. In my opinion, it is definitely the best coaster at Magic Mountain, and I feel like everybody would like this coaster. It's one of the most perfect coasters on the planet, and I definitely would recommend it to everybody visiting the park. But that is going to do it for our ranking of every single roller coaster at Six Flags Magic Mountain. I know that definitely our opinion will differ from a lot of people, so be sure to comment down below your ranking of the top 20 roller coasters at Six Flags Magic Mountain. Thank you so much for watching today's video. But before you go, be sure to check out our previous video ranking all the roller coasters at Six Flags Magic Mountain so you can see how it compares to this one. Thanks for watching and we'll catch you in the next video.